Are you angry right now? now? I'm wondering why you're so angry. I'm not angry. I'm having a blast. This is a fun time. But we're not having a fun time? I think we're having a fun time. You're having a blast, but whenever you look at me, I see anger. I don't understand I love you, why. dude. I kiss okay, you on the lips right I'm now, but you won't do it because you're, you're weird about that stuff. So. Okay, all right. <laughs> Bobby, good to see you. No, I, no, I have to say that. Okay. Bonjour. Okay. Yeah, okay. Bonjour. Okay. I'm shaped like a scallop. <laughs> So I have to do what I can, you know what I mean? I'm like a oh, fatter Pikachu. <laughs> you know? Oh, oh, it's like in the neck. A little sneak attack, you know? Just give, me, just give me a kiss real quick. Just give me, mm, just give me a kiss real quick. Bobby's performing at the improv. <laughs> <laughs> What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. If you haven't heard, Bobby Lee just Barbra Streisand himself. This whole thing is pretty wild, there's so much to talk about, so if this is your first video on this channel, you've come at the right time. And speaking of first timers, the last time I spoke to you guys just a few days ago, we were pushing for 80,000 subscribers, and now we're about to hit 90,000. You guys are unbelievable. I'm not quite sure what's going on here, but I'm always thanking you and I'm not going to stop. Hopefully we'll hit 100k by the end of January. So if you're not subscribed yet, sort that out and join us as we push for 100 and beyond. And it's interesting because I think one of the reasons why we're growing so quickly is because people are just so sick and tired of all these two-faced clowns and finally there's a few of us actually calling them out which has forced them to show their true colours. If you haven't heard of Too Lazy To Try, he's basically a YouTuber in a similar space to my channel. He's got almost 200,000 subs so if you like my content the chances are you'll probably like his. But last week he dropped a video covering the Bad Friends podcast with Bobby Lee and Andrew Santino. They had David Spade on as their guest and Bobby Lee turned up 44 minutes late. When he finally turned up, you could tell Spade was a little bit dirty about it, even though he was joking around by saying, I've done 32 movies, 77 commercials, kind of as a low-key flex to remind Bobby Lee of his place and that Spade isn't the kind of guy to keep waiting like that. He even said this is your Super Bowl. Apparently, Bobby was the one who cancelled the Friday booking they had and pushed it over to the Monday, and then he still turned up late. And don't get me wrong, these guys are comedians, I'm sure they were just joking around and having a laugh about it, but keeping your guests waiting for almost an hour is pretty poor form. So then enter Too Lazy with his video covering all of this, and to be honest, Too Lazy's pretty even-handed, I've never really seen him go hard at anyone with his takes, he's always pretty chill and just gives you the background and fills you in on everything you need to know, so when he came out in his last video and said that Bad Friends did a full DMCA takedown of his video, which resulted in a copyright strike on his channel, everyone was kinda surprised, including myself. My previous video where I talked about Bobby Lee showing up late to Bad Friends and Andrew Santino and David Spade being annoyed with him and roasting him for it, that video, they ended up doing a copyright takedown of it, so now I have a strike on my channel. And once again with these comedians, nothing is off limits until you start talking about them. I mean, they love going on and on about how important free speech is and how bad censorship is and how people should have thicker skin and not get offended so easily. But then once you criticize them or make fun of them, and say something that they don't like and they get offended instead of them just ignoring it or responding to it they'll try to silence it which i feel like is always just the worst idea and some comedians i think know that and actually stand by what they say i'm gonna break this down for all you guys explain exactly what's going on why i think they took down too lazy's video and reveal the gaping hole that they missed which could potentially work out in too lazy's favor but I'm also going to show you some clips you might not have seen before, Bobby Lee being an absolute creep on live television, and I'll also say a few words about Bobby's Tijuana story, which I covered in detail previously. Basically, for a guy who's treading on thin ice, this takedown from Bad Friends is so hypocritical, and I'll show you exactly why. So stick around for all of that, but to start off with, for those of you who think it's funny or not a big deal to copyright strike someone's channel, you guys have to realize if you get three strikes, YouTube will delete your channel. And for a lot of us, this is our livelihood, just like it is for a lot of these comedians as well. So it always amazes me how people think this is funny and it's just a bit or whatever because they're comedians. But the response from Too Lazy subscribers was absolutely wild. If you go over to that episode of Bad Friends, basically the whole comment section has been completely taken over with people calling out Bobby and Santino for striking his channel. I've never seen anything like that before and I guarantee you, Bad Friends were not expecting this kind of backlash. 
trash. Even their latest community post plugging their Patreon got smashed in the comments, people calling them out and demanding they release Too Lazy's copyright takedown, and these people are not going to go away. I don't know if they thought this would blow over and it would just be temporary, everyone will get over it. I mean, look at Brendan Shaw, the guy is still involved in a lawsuit with a YouTuber who is trying to sue, and everyone knows about it. He's tried so hard to shut down all the criticism and hate that he gets, but it's had the complete opposite effect, and he Barbra Streisand himself too. Now, I should probably explain what that is for those of you who don't know. The Streisand effect is actually like a real thing, I didn't just make it up. It's got its own Wikipedia page and everything which says, the Streisand effect is an unintended consequence of attempts to hide, remove, or censor information, where the effort instead backfires by increasing awareness of that information. It was named after American singer and actress Barbara Streisand, whose attempt to suppress Kenneth Edelman's website publication of this photograph of her cliff-top residence in Malibu, California, taken to document California coastal erosion, inadvertently drew far greater attention to the previously obscure photograph in 2003. So she actually tried to sue the photographer and Pictopia.com for $50 million for violation of her privacy. She ended up obviously losing and paying his costs of 177 grand. And now there's a whole effect named after her. Just quickly, here's a closer shot of her Malibu mansion. Maybe this shot's a little bit better, but if you still can't see it, here's an even tighter shot. I mean, feel free to pause the video and get a good look, you know, take it all in, why don't you? And so it seems like that's what's happened here as well. Now, for my regulars, you guys know that I'm definitely not going to stop here. As soon as I saw Too Lazy's video where he mentioned this, I started digging straight away and I even took the whole weekend to just sit back and really think about this and try to understand what happened instead of rushing to make a video. This is basically where I landed. Unlike some of the other podcasts I cover, Bad Friends is actually pretty successful and they're still growing, right? They're making decent money, it doesn't seem like a big production, so Bobby and Santino would most likely be keeping most of their ad revenue and brand deal money. Now, what that tells me is that this copyright takedown was probably not motivated by money, at least not in my opinion. I will say though, Too Lazy's video did come out pretty soon after that Bad Friends episode dropped, so you could make the argument that they didn't want Too Lazy's video to overshadow their own podcast and take a whole bunch of views off them. Now, despite the fact that there is nothing in US copyright law that would support that strategy from Bad Friends, the timing of the criticism has no bearing on your right to take down that criticism as the copyright owner. However, like I said, some podcasters like to let their content sit for a few days and don't like other people using their clips. Joe Rogan does that, for example. But think about this, right? There are many other videos covering the Bad Friends podcast, and I've never heard of them doing this before. So if they really were worried about losing views, wouldn't they do this regularly? And secondly, Too Lazy's video really only focused on the fact that Bobby Lee was late, so it's not like a substitute for the original work. In copyright law, this is referred to as the heart of the work. Now, once you remove money from the equation, it therefore seems plausible that the most likely reason for the takedown was Bobby Lee was probably having a bad day, he felt embarrassed about being so late for David Spade's appearance, maybe Santino and a producer or an agent or manager, whoever it was, grilled him over it, then he saw Too Lazy's video about it and thought to himself, yeah, nah, I'm not copying this, I want that video taken down, and he either did it himself or instructed somebody else to do it for him. Let me just say, I have no idea what the actual reason was, so I'm just here speculating based on the limited information available to me. But having said that, let me clear something up because I've seen a lot of misinformation being spread around by Bobby Lee's defenders who clearly have no idea how copyright law works. The copyright owner is ultimately liable and responsible for any takedowns or copyright claims, even if it was actually done by a producer or an agent or a third party company. Whoever it is, if Too Lazy decides to take legal action against Bad Friends, which I think he should, it would be directly against the copyright owner, regardless of who actioned the takedown. So this whole argument that I've seen where people are saying, lay off Bobby, lay off Santino, it was probably a producer or their agent who did it, not them, that makes no difference. In fact, that would be a matter for Bobby and Santino to deal with, not too lazy. 
So I hope that bit makes sense. And I should also say it is possible that Bobby and Santino don't even own the copyright to Bad Friends either. They could have assigned the copyright to a shell company or somebody else. Who knows, man? There are so many different ways of structuring this stuff. Too Lazy can figure all of that out on the back end though, but I haven't been able to discern who the actual copyright owner is myself. Having said all of that, my opinion is still that I cannot understand why they would have done this unless it came from Bobby Lee himself. There's no pattern of copyright claims from these guys, it doesn't seem like they have a system in place, therefore the only issue that stands out for me was the fact that Bobby Lee was simply late and he feels embarrassed about it, tried to suppress Too Lazy's video and in the process Barbara Streisand himself. Okay, so one final thing before I move on, you guys know I love this stuff. If you look at the actual copyright takedown notice that Too Lazy received, which he did put up on his latest video that we saw, you can see that their claim was made over the entire video. Now, I myself made a copyright takedown last week, exactly the way Bad Friends did. Some random Vietnamese channel downloaded a full video off my channel, used my exact thumbnail, didn't edit any of it or transform anything in any way, uploaded it with my thumbnail with the video still in its original form. Now, that is what YouTube's content ID system should be used for, where someone clearly steals content, makes no effort to transform it through contextual commentary or analysis, and seeks to profit from your work directly. So that's why when I did my takedown, I issued it for the entire video because it was literally a carbon copy of my video. But Too Lazy's video was different. See, he used clips from Bad Friends and he transformed the original work into the context of his own commentary about Bobby Lee being late. So why did they claim the entire video? There's an option to actually list the timestamps where Too Lazy used their clips, but they didn't do that, which in my opinion is grounds for a summary dismissal because it's clearly a false copyright claim intended to silence a critic. Just because somebody uses clips from your own work doesn't mean you're entitled to the whole work itself. So that tells me that this was a lazy takedown. Oh, the irony of doing a lazy takedown on a too lazy video. I mean, they couldn't even get their paperwork straight. If this was a professionally planned and executed takedown, why are they claiming work that isn't theirs? And finally, if that's not enough, don't forget about discovery. So in civil cases, before they go to trial, during the preliminary hearings, they go through this thing called discovery. Now, in my experience, discovery is where you make or break your case. Because say hypothetically, if Bobby Lee saw Too Lazy's video, he got all upset about it, he got offended, and then he messaged or emailed his agent or producer or whoever it was and told them to take the video down because it's bad for publicity or it made him sad or something to that effect. Too Lazy's legal team would be entitled to access that during the discovery process because it could be used as evidence that bad friends used a copyright takedown to silence a critic, which would be illegal. Whoops. And judging by how sloppy and rushed the takedown was, if that did happen, I doubt they were using untraceable emails or messages because even if they're watching this video right now and try to delete any of those messages, if they exist, they're very easy to recover. Oh, and judges really don't like it when people destroy evidence, you know, misleading the court and all that. And don't laugh, you have no idea how many people think they have a strong case only to completely screw themselves before they even get to trial. This stuff happens all the time. Just ask Twitter when Alex Berenson sued them and uncovered US government interference in telling Twitter which accounts to ban. Yeah, that all came out in discovery. So, there's a lot to digest there, I get it, but I know a lot of you appreciate my legal breakdowns, especially when it's related to these two-faced free speech clowns who call themselves comedians when it's convenient, and they're trying to get away with being complete hypocrites at the same time. And so I came across all these clips the other day that I hadn't seen before of Bobby Lee being a creep on live television, but apparently getting away with it because he's a comedian. You know, it's just a bit. So while you're watching this, ask yourselves this simple question. If you were at a work function or a meeting, whatever it is, and you did the same thing, what do you reckon would happen to you? It's not real. I requested it. I called my agent. I want to let's sit, sit, sit next to you. It's good to see wanna, you. Because oh, you were on paternity oh, leave last night, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see you. <laughs> 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 I love it. I lived in Europe for a while. That's how we can. That is how you can. 
your humor is yeah. a little self-deprecating. Not really. A little bit. Yeah, a little bit, yes. A little bit. Is that kind of your shtick? Well, you guys are genetically, uh, won the genetic lottery. You guys are beautiful people. Oh, that's very nice. And I, I'm shaped like a scallop. <laughs> so I have to do what I can, you know what I mean? I'm like a fatter Pikachu. <laughs> you know? Oh, oh. <laughs> like in the a little sneak attack, you know, like Pearl Harbor. Right? Just... Is that, can I say is that, is that too soon? Is it too soon to do Pearl Harbor jokes? I'm so sorry. I'm not even Japanese. I'm Korean. So let's move on. Thank you so much. All right. So we never know exactly what our next guest is going to do when he kind of roars through our studio. Yes. Uh, you know Bobby Lee from Mad TV. Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. And this weekend he'll be in the Chicago area at the improv to make audiences laugh. It is uh, a friend of the show. <laughs> he can never quite get on this couch gracefully. Good morning. It's the one and only Bobby Lee. How are you, Yay! ladies? Yay! Yay! Clap, everybody, clap. Yay! I need it. I need it. We're also working on a movie called Rush Hour 4. Yes! Where we don't solve any crimes. We just eat donuts and stuff, right? <laughs> okay. Let's get to see it. <laughs> Hi, is this TV? It, it is, is TV. Yeah. Oh, can I sit over here? You can sit, sit over there. Sit over there. Wherever you like. Wherever I you haven't seen you in so long. It's good to see you. You've got so much Oh, energy. watch the, watch the, the watch the public, <laughs> personal the space. public nice effect. Nice to see you. You and I should do a movie, Rush Hour 4. <laughs> If we're gonna go racial, I get to be. I get to Rush be. Rush hour four in space. I get to be. Chris, Chris, it's gonna be wonderful, right? Chris, Chris you're not in it. You're out. We cut. We wrote you out of the script. I'm Jewish. Yeah. Oh, you, you are. Find a place uh, for me. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, you can do all. You can you produce it. <laughs> I'll be your. I'll be your. What's the host's name again? Yeah, you know why? How many times do we work together? Twice. No. And I haven't seen you in like five years. It's been more. It's been give less than five. Give me, <laughs> give me a kiss real quick. Just give me. Mm, just give me a kiss real quick. Oh my God, Bobby, we love that, love that show. I have a zit right here too. You know the one underneath the nose. I hate those. You can't see that. You can totally not see. Oh, oh I see it now. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, trick. I try to kiss. Oh my God! It works every time. Yeah, you, you don't feel know. good. You want me to do it again? Hey. What am I? What? 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 Where are you going? Do not kiss going? my oh, ankle. Right. Oh, okay, my okay. ankle my bone. bone. My bad. I'm sorry. Come back. Everything's fine. Everything's fine, everybody. Everything's fine. Come back. I won't assault you anymore. No, I don't trust you. Why? Because I can see you <laughs> jumping on me. a mile away, and, and I see you too. <laughs> I see you too. I'm, it's just oh, inadvertent, you. inadvertent, sweetheart. I'm sure you are. Okay. Did you just? I try to squeeze Almost. one in every year, and it never doesn't work. But well, you least expect that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like open mouth kisses. I'm from wait. Europe. Okay, wait. Listen, you're welcome, Bobby Lee. You're we love you. Bobby. I love you. We love you so much. Uh uh. Don't you try your I tongue try, over here. Try. So wait. It's the Korean me. hello. <laughs> <laughs> If you go to Korea, that's what they do. They do. Oh, wow. yeah. they do is that, that what they do? Okay. And it's cultural, but if you don't want to get cultural, that's fine. <laughs> Push my people away even more. <laughs> or accept. Uh -huh. <laughs> Come, back to the seat. Come back to the seat. Come back to the seat. You're being so rude right now. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. I apologize. My bad. I'm sorry. If you get up again, I swear to God, I'm never going to come back here, okay? Anyway, um, I have three cats and a dog, and um, God, those ankles are so appetizing. <laughs> oh my God, that's got really. I just want to. <laughs> I'm going to say something right now, okay? If I come back here next year and my photo's not on the wall, I swear I'm going to snap. Okay. All right? I'm going right. to snap. Bye, Bobby Lee. Bobby Lee. I love you guys. I love you guys Bobby's so performing at the improv. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I got my ankle bone kissed by Bobby Lee. Why are you looking at me? Why are you know. looking at me? Why are you staring at me? Chrissy, Chris <laughs> why are you staring at me? Chrissy! Oh my ah, gosh, I in know. all the years that I've done interviews. God, you smell pure. <laughs> <laughs> she smells so pure, guys. My lord. That's the magic oh, of that my perfume, huh? lord, that's delicious, it's great. Oh my gosh. <laughs> She's leaving. Now listen, Bobby Lee's a funny guy. I'm not denying that. My point here is actually quite simple. If bad friends are in the business of cancellation, I think they should look in their own backyard before throwing stones, because it looks to me like they might live in a glass house. And I've defended him before. Remember the video I made titled, When Comedians Go Too Far, where I showed three different bits from Bobby Lee, Bill Burr, and Tom Segura? Well, the one I showed from Bobby Lee was his Tijuana story. Here is the condensed version. I'm going to be completely honest with you. This story could ruin my career. Shut up. Come it could ruin me. What? This Bobby, yeah. hold on. Did you kill someone? Nothing can ruin your career. Nothing can ruin Asa's career. And nothing can ruin my career. We're the three people here that have unruinable. You're a fucking comedian. 
Okay, let's no. move on. Yeah, let's move on. <laughs> thank you so much. The let's only thing on. you can do is make your career nice better. Nice pep talk. Yeah. Okay, Nani, Nani, thank you so much. You're my pillar and my strength. And okay, so anyway, I went down by myself, and the Adelita was packed with Marines, right? So I go, you don't want this too many people. And especially, you don't want it like when they come down from the stairs, you want to grab them then. Sloppy you know I mean? seconds. Yeah, I don't want that. Sloppy yeah. gross. Right? Sloppy things. You don't want to know about. Right. I'm going to repeat that. I don't know. The most high-priced escort. Do you really know her age? And I no. also want to say this just to justify my, my actions. I was very, I was young and I ne- never got girls. There was this girl <laughs> and she had her face toward the brick wall. She wasn't even facing out. Oh my god, I know. And where that's going. when I knew. I, that's when I knew she was the one. <laughs> <laughs> the moon is shining through the window in a little crack. Okay. Right. Very romantic. Yeah, it's very romantic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then her, her head turns, and the moon. The, 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 I see her face. Yeah. And you can see tears oh. coming down her face and snot bubbles, and she's shaking. Okay. Why are you smiling, dude? <laughs> It's so rude, bro. It's his that sister. could have been your sister. It's dude. his sister. Yeah, yeah. Right? And so I, I did what anyone else would do. I power <laughs> her. <laughs> right? Just so I can get it over with. Right? Wait, so she, it was probably her first... Her I don't know. I don't want to get into it. All right? I don't no, know. No, let's get dear, into dear it. Dear Lord, I don't know what happened. At the time when I made that video, I said, this isn't my kind of joke. I didn't think it was funny, but I don't think for a second that he should be canceled over it like so many other people do and still do. That whole cancel culture thing is such BS. If someone breaks the law, it's different, there are consequences. But otherwise, if it simply hurts your feelings or offends you, or even just in my case, where I didn't find it funny or entertaining, who cares? Don't listen to it. Switch it off. Do something else. Don't buy tickets to their show. And if enough people agree with you, then basic supply and demand economics will take care of the rest. The problem is that a whole bunch of these comedians say and do stupid things like invading people's personal space on live television, trying to silence their critics by taking down their videos using false copyright claims, and then turn around and say, hey, I'm just a comedian, it was just a bit. Just like Tom Segura's airport meltdown, all his sycophantic fans were saying, you guys don't get the joke, it's just a bit, can't you tell when he's being funny, he's a comedian, blah blah blah. So tell me then, if it was just a bit, why did Tom delete all his tweets from October and not say anything about it? He was quite vocal about how Netflix wouldn't let him put certain jokes into his Sledgehammer comedy special, so he released those jokes separately on YouTube himself. But who told him to delete those tweets? Why isn't he calling them out? I mean, if it was just a bit and he's just a comedian, why the double standard? What are you trying to hide? The real reason is these guys are all hypocrites who are just trying to get paid and ride the comedy podcast badwagon for as long as they can. And unless we call them out, they're just going to keep getting away with it time and time again, just like Tim Dillon did last year when he did the exact same thing to Too Lazy for making a video about his fallout with Ben Avery. All his fans came out and defended him. It's all a bit. Tim admits he's a hypocrite. He's not hiding anything, blah, blah, blah. It's the same thing. Bobby Lee, Tim Dillon, and Tom Segura can be funny and still be cowards at the same time. Both things can be simultaneously true, but you can't claim to be a free speech absolutist and then try to silence a critic for hurting your feelings. Anyway, these are just my opinions. I hope you found this video as interesting as I did. Let me know what you guys think about all of this in the comments below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, consider jumping on board so you don't miss out on any of my future uploads. That's it from me. I'll catch you in the next one. Bobby Lee in the Shut the f- Yeah, you f***ing a 12-year-old girl, dude. You f***ing a 12-year-old girl. You f***ing 12-year-old girl. And she I- wanted you told this story four times. Four times, dude. You f***ing a 12-year-old girl and she wanna. You f***ing a 12-year-old girl and she wanna. I did a 12-year-old girl. Yeah, you f***ing did, dude. You, you no, told this story four times. She was 12, dude. That was the age you said. No, I'm not she sure. was. It's 12, dude. Oh, you're a girl. Do you want to? No, I didn't. No, I didn't.